Good morning. This is Nancy from Spirit Creations. This morning, I am working on a very fun project called Inchy Prayers. And um, Inchies are very popular in lots of different areas. Um, and I was making a prayer book for a friend and decided to make Inchy Prayers. And then another one of my friends saw it and thought it was a wonderful idea, not just for the book, but for um, to sneak into somebody's pocket, put in a purse, um, give it to somebody as you're shaking their hand, put it in a lunch. Um, there's just a whole lot of different places that you could put an inchy prayer. And so, um, they are rather addictive. So today I'm going to show you how I do it. There's certainly a lot of different ways to do this. The first thing is that you have to have uh, an inch um, piece of cardboard. Now, um, you want something that's stiff enough that when it gets done, it's going to be um, able to support what you're doing. So you don't want to use cardstock. You want to use um, some kind of cardboard, and a lot of packing is just perfect for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rotary cutter, affectionately known in our household as the Wizzy Whacker, to um, cut that one-inch pieces. So, and it's easier for me to turn it this way and measure from the one inch line on the ruler. So if you notice, it's not lined up on the mat. That's intentional. Okay, and then simply cut one inch. Now, if you don't have a rotary cutter, you can use a paper cutter. Um, if you don't have that, you can, um, mark with a pencil and cut with scissors, um, however you would like to do it. For each inchy prayer, you're going to need two. So I am going to stop there. We have two. And we also have some that I've cut previously. Excuse me. The next thing that you're going to want is general purpose um, masking tape. This is not painter's tape. Um, this tape, if you leave it um, stuck to something it for any length of time, it's going to stick. And if you actually put it on paint, it's going to take the paint off. So what I do is, I'm going to get this out of the way. I just cut a piece, tear a piece, and then this is one inch masking tape. So if I did it right, um, then it should be very close to the edges of the tape. Then I take a toothpick and put in the middle and lay the second piece down, trying to match up with the other one. Okay. Now, this the space in between is going to be the spine to our little book. Okay, and it's as simple as then taking another piece of masking tape laying it over the top and making sure that the masking tape between the two pieces lines up and then burnishing the masking tape down and I got it stuck okay, and then just trim off the excess. Now as you can see we have our little book. Let's do another one of those so we have more than one to mess with. Okay. 
when I do these, I usually do five or six of them at a time um, because then I have them ready and it's um, simply a matter of taking them to the next step. Now, burnish this well. And I just like to check to make sure that it lines up well. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be exact. Okay, there we go. Now then, what we are going to do is we are going to put the inside, we're going to cover the inside. And we're going to do that with any decorative paper. You can use scrapbooking paper, you can use um, wrapping paper. I'm using painted pages. Um, and you want the back side. And on this one, the paint is thick enough that it doesn't really matter um, whether what way I lay it on this paper. So I'm just going to put a little white glue all over, making sure to especially get that seam in the middle. Okay, and I'm placing it so that there is paper all around the outside and I'm simply going to cut so that there's about a quarter inch, maybe a little more, um, around the outside edge. Then I'm going to turn it over and I can kind of see where the spine is and I'm going to put that toothpick in there and burnish this down just like I did with the masking tape. What that does is creates that so that it it easily bends okay so we'll do one more now this page i can see the printing on and I don't want that to be straight on whatever I do. So I am going to do this and set it at an angle, which means I need to set it in from the corner a bit so that um, I have that quarter inch all the way around. Okay, now you notice that my corner is short. doesn't matter. It'll be fine. Um, now I'm going to find the middle. Now, I really like to wait till those dry because what happens if you don't is that they shift a little bit and I don't like that. So I already have some that have the paper that is dry. And so we will work the next process on that. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to turn it over so that you can see the back side, so you know where you're cutting. And you're gonna cut each corner, not to the, not quite to the corner, but just outside of the corner. Okay, and then here at the seam, you're going to make a V with the point right at that, um, the spine back of this little book. Okay, and then to fold the edges, I'm just going to do this. And I do that so that the that they're ready to 
um, be stuck down when we put the glue on. And the tabletop, doing it on the tabletop, ensures that I'm really snug right up there so it looks um, very sharp. I like to have it look sharp. Okay, so then you just put a little glue on one side and fold it over like that. And there you have it. Okay, now we do the other long side I like to do. Um, it doesn't matter if you do the ends or the sides, but just do both of them at the same time. And the main thing is you want to make sure that those corners don't stick out. And if you need to clip a little, it's not a problem. Go ahead and clip a little. And there it is. Okay, so let's do another one. So we have one to, an extra one to play with. Okay, so trim the corners. Make a V at the spine. Okay, and then we're going to fold it down by pressing the edge against the table and folding it down. Burnishing with your finger. Do the same thing on the other side. And both ends. Now one of the things that I can tell from this is that we're going to have a little bit more overlap than what I like. So before we even get in there, I'm going to trim that out. Oh, I think this side. Oh, nope, this I do. Okay. Now we can glue. I'm doing both edges right now because I got too much glue and so it won't hurt a thing. You just want those edges to be secure. Okay, so just fold and flop. Burnish with your fingers so they're good and tight. Fold again. For some of you, this is probably pretty repetitive, but for others, you might not have done this before. All right, so we have two insides. Now, against my own logic, it's easier for me if I put whatever little prayer I'm going to have in my book and next. So I have just printed um, some very short prayers um, or thoughts and printed them out and prepared them so that I can cut them when I want them. This one says, Oh God, open my eyes to see you in every person I meet today. And this one, this one is one of my favorites, especially when you're dealing with kids. God believes in you, and so do I. Okay, so you can put these in however you want. Um, 
So this one, I think I'm going to do right smack in the middle and I'm going to leave the words together. I'm just going to cut so that it's trimmed around them. I will attach the prayers that I sometimes use on these um, as a word file down below. Um, and I will remove the fonts because sometimes those don't transfer very well. And you can have fun playing with the fonts. Just remember, these are really small. These are one inch. Basically, you have two by one inch space to work with. So it's not much. Now, let's see. I'm thinking that I might just put it on this half and we'll put something else over here. So I'm going to cut a little more, get rid of some of the white space, and trim where I didn't cut straight. All right, and then for this part, I'd like to use, use your best glue stick. Um, not all glue sticks are made alike and are, are created equal, and you want one that's really going to stick. I love this particular brand. It's Avery Permanent. Um, and I don't usually have any problem with things coming off that I put on, which I have with other glue sticks. So there we go. We have that down. And I glued something behind it, which I'm going to get out. There we go. Okay, and let me think. Um... Let me just reach for something here. One of my little containers of whatnots. Okay, and I think that I have, I do, I have a very purpley glitter butterfly which will be really fun right there. Now, let me see if I have another one because we might want to use that on the outside of this one too, depending on what fabric we choose. Okay, I'm gonna put this down with white glue because this is a little heavier. Um, this was done with glitter cardstock. So I wanna make sure that I Okay, let's set that aside for a minute and we'll do the next one. Now, I'm not sure. Oh, I think that I could get this on there, but what I'd really like to do is to cut these apart. I want to get as rid of as much white as I can. Um, just because I think it'll be more fun. Now then, I think with this one, what we might want to do is give a little edge color to these pieces. So I'm going to grab a blue ink pad. And luckily, it's one of the top ones. Now, hopefully these blues won't look too funny together. I'm going to try it on a piece 
of scratch first so that um, I'm not so that it if it doesn't match I haven't ruined a piece of of um, the prayer okay Oh, I don't think that'll look too bad. It's not exactly the same blue, but it will meld in. So we will use this. You can tell when you need to re-ink. Um, this is just a makeup wedge. Um, and you can tell when you need to re-ink because it you uh, basically you are doing a downward motion um, just hitting the edges and when it starts just doing white then you need to reload it but a little goes a long ways with this pretty much I'm using stays on it's because it's what I have um, it's pretty versatile and I can use it on anything. Um, I don't spend a lot of money on ink pads. I kind of like that one better with more ink on it. So I'm going to put a little more on this one. All right. That quick. We are done with that part. <coughs> So it's time to glue it down and we just put glue stick down now when you do the next part you want to make sure they're gonna fit because like I said these prayers have to be pretty small in order to fit and that's not going to fit well, primarily because I put that too much of an angle. There's kind of a happy medium here. You want um, you want the font big enough that people can read it, but you want it um, small enough that it'll fit on here. Okay, now hopefully this time it will work. So I'm going to put the glue on. Overlapping it just a little. And notice I'm going to take the toothpick and put it down in that um, spine again to um, help this stay in place. Now then, put the last one in here. I think I'm going to go. And my toothpick again. And put the lid on the glue. Okay. Now, we're going to set this one aside to let it dry a little bit. And I want to ink on this one just a little bit. And I think I'm going to use... I'm going to use a sparkly glaze on... Oh, no, it's a metallic sparkly. That's kind of fun. Okay. And I'm just going to roughly go around these edges. Now, because this is a gel pen, if you wanted to smear those edges, you could do that. I don't really want to do that on this one, but it could be done. 
I'll show that show you that in just a minute on a scrap piece. Okay, and that just kind of adds a little color. And I want to go back and hit a spot that I missed. Okay. So let's pretend like these two. So I've done my edge right there and I could smear it. Can you see how kind of fun that is? And it works well on edges and that kind of thing. Um, it's just a matter of taste, whatever you would like to do. We want to save our little butterfly here. Now, I want to add antenna to our butterfly, and I'm doing so with a pen that is not permanent, not a good thing. Okay, so, what that means is either I'm not going to put any um, protective coat on this, like a varnish on it, or else I'm going to need to spray it to seal it first. And the same with this glue pen, this glitter pen. These gel pens are not permanent. They're water-based. So if you put a fluid over the top, it's going to smear. So if I'm going to do something more on top of this, which I do a lot of times, then it um, needs to uh, be sprayed first. Let me show you what happens when you don't spray first. This is one that it was um, an archival waterproof ink that I was just had around the edges. Well, when I put the coat over the top, because I like to seal these in, um, it just made a royal mess out of this. And this ink was all on the sides, and it all went to the middle where the words are. And so that's just looks terrible so that's a piece for the trash can but um I, I saved it so that i could show you the problem okay we're getting close to getting to the um we're going to start working on the outside now now you can use um if you want to you can use more paper i love using fabric so I have my nifty fabric box on here and for the blue one I think I'm going to use this wavy blue fabric that has all the different colors in it now you can use I struggle with the glue for this I'm going to, on this one, this is a pretty heavy fabric, um, and it's not dark, so if the glue soaks through, which it will, um, it's not going to show too badly on the outside. If this fabric was black, we would have a problem because um, it will... Um, every fingerprint will show with this. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut around this edge, leaving like maybe an eighth of an inch if you want the ravelly look. If you don't, you can cut closer. But I really like frayed edges. I think it adds to the piece. 